at this. We have Milan. How you doing, Milan? Excellent. How are you doing, Rich? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for joining us. Thank you kindly for having me. Really excited to be here. I'm excited to have you on the show. We are already live. We've got 60 people watching. They're very excited to learn about Christina Lake Cannabis and speak to the Director of Sales and Marketing. And um, man, what a ride it's been for Christina Lake Cannabis. And the funny part is nobody even knows yet. <laughs> like you guys are still undiscovered. Like Absolutely this is rich. just getting started. And I'm loving that we're doing this while you're getting discovered, while you're becoming more mainstream, mm -hmm. while people are learning about your story. But what people don't understand is that for our community, when we found Christina Lake, it was at 46 cents. This is already up 100%. Absolutely. Okay. So um, what would you say is your competitive advantage? You know, the cannabis sector is definitely exploding sector right now. We see Tilray exploding, Afri exploding in the United States. Uh, IIPR, Scott's Miracle Grow, GW Pharma just recently exploded. Uh, a lot bigger companies, True Leave, uh, uh, GR, uh, Grow Generation Corp, Planet Absolutely. 13, like deal after deal after deal have done extremely well, specifically in the United States. Only a few companies right. have done well in Canada. You guys have been one of those that's come out of the gates and done well really, really quickly. What is your competitive advantage? What makes you guys different? You know what, Rich, um, we've got a very unique, um, I almost would say a romantic story. I think Christina, like being kind of a remote, um, very small populated area located in a very picturesque kind of unique setting. It's, it's about 500 meters from the U.S. border. So, I mean, I'll kind of give you an all around backstory on, on kind of what makes us unique. And then I'll go into the competitive advantage. So we are located in a very, very special place that's protected by the mountains. So, so we're very much protected from any sort of intense rain. Um, the area is basically, as far as geographically, it's, it's, it's basically a semi-desert. So we've got a very tropical climate. I mean, at the height of the summer, uh, we reached 43, 44 degrees Celsius. I mean, the, you know, the plants are getting tremendous amount of sun. Um, the soil, soil is very healthy. Again, one of the, and, and if you don't mind, I'll get a little bit more technical, but one of the things that uh, a lot of people fear about outdoor producers such as us is that, you know, perhaps years or decades before there could have been farming lands and there could have been some leftover pesticides, heavy metals from, from tomatoes, potatoes, and, and, you know, not to point anything out, but this, this is often an issue in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and some of the very heavy farming regions. So we are very lucky that the spot that we have, we actually have no neighbors and, and we certainly don't have any, any farming lands around. So our soil is absolutely pristine. Um, you know, that there's no pesticides, no, no heavy metals, and we go to great lengths to, to test everything. So we've done full soil analysis. And I should also actually highlight that despite the fact that our soil is very healthy and it's, it's a very much an untouched area, we actually ended up buying, buying third party professional soil as in customized for us, as far as the pH, um, vitamins, mineral content. So, um, and actually on top of it, Rich, I should also highlight that we, we ended up planting into individual pots. So we're kind of one of these very unique outdoor locations where we get a lot of sun. We're quite protected from, from the unwanted elements. It's, it's not an ex farming region. So, so, so we don't have any contaminants. And we also went to great lengths to, to kind of plant individual pots so that way we have full control. We, we've got a fairly fairly um, um, sophisticated distribution system for nutrients and water. So we have full full control over over every single plant. We also have drone systems that kind of kind of can monitor um, any sort of temperature and 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 any kind of um, unwanted elements. So so we've got a very sophisticated outdoor location and 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 our grow operation. Um, further to that, I should also say that, you know, for the future now with kind of the democratic government in um, the Democrat government in the US, um, we're 500 meters from the border. So, so down the road, there's also the potential of, of very close collaboration with our neighbors, which, of course, at this point is, is irrelevant. But I do want to highlight that there is some, you know, that there's great future should our neighbors federally legalize, which I think there's also you can agree there's a lot of speculation about this. So I think that's another element that doesn't doesn't necessarily get highlighted as, as frequently. And now getting to the nitty gritty as to what's actually our competitive advantage, Rich. So we have a very, very low cost of input feed. I certainly don't want to be comparing to anybody else, but 
um, without giving you the straight goods. And, and I'm quite aware of, of, of what it costs other producers. We are absolutely growing at a fraction of them. So, so if you really look at the economics of the cannabis industry, whether, whether wholesale or, or retail focus, really price and quality is really what dictates how you can go to market and how you can win. And we are set up for success in the sense that we are starting with very, very low cost of input feed. And I think, I know that you had quite an extensive um, conversation with Joel Dumarask, our CEO, but if you don't mind, I'll repeat some of the things. Um, you know, a, a really tremendous thing that happened to us and we're incredibly excited about is that all of our strategic planning was, was done on, you know, we were expecting to get 15,000 kilos rich. We ended up pulling in 32 and a half thousand. So, so, so if you look at our cost planning, we effectively basically cut that in half just, just by pu pulling in so much. And I mean, we had a truly bumper crop, but again, this is a testament to, to why I spent so much time explaining you, you the valley and, and the protected area from, from kind of the unwanted elements, because it truly is an amazing spot. So, so, you know, we, we have very, very low costs of, of input as a result, input of, as a result of all of these things that I just highlighted. And so I would say that that would be probably the number one competitive advantages. Um, second, we've got a very lean and mean team. And what I mean by that is, is I think as you're seeing, and, and you kind of know it on, on, on so much consolidation in the industry, I think, Rich, we can all agree that this is a result of, of perhaps undisciplined, maybe a little bit too proactive of a growth where I think companies were building out, you know, hoping for, for a much larger market and and i think you know due to some of the regulatory hurdles of of, of maybe slower rollout in ontario slower rollout in, in some of the other provinces i think i think that was a bet that just simply didn't really work out now with us um why i'm saying that lean and mean is because we're very very tactical and cautious in our growth and our expansion so i think instead of trying to grow too big too quickly we're actually very tactical in our execution. So I would say, again, I, I, highlighted, I highlight this as a competitive advantage because I think you can agree that when you're smaller, we're far more nimble and that allows us to customize our offerings. It allows us to customize our, the, the way we go to market. And also when, when we're dealing with our clients, we can, be, we can be far more nimble and flexible in our execution. We, um, I think another thing is because we're kind of a newbie on the block, if you will, um, we, we don't have any, any kind of pre-existing contracts. We are, we are yet, yet to build out the contract. So, so, so we're very, very happy to customize and work with our customers. So I think we've got basically low cost, lean team structure, um, very careful and tactical growth, and then um, just focus on execution. And I, think, and I think that's one area that, Rich, you can agree with, uh, I would assume, you know, based, not just based on our stock price, but if, if you look at our press releases, which... We, we try to be very detailed and, and really kind of provide as much information and, and communication to, to all of our investor public. But I think you can agree on anything that we've set out, we've executed on. And I think, and I think that's a testament to the fact that Christina Lake has very, very seasoned um, executives that joined the board of directors. So we have people who are highly, highly experienced, but also very highly motivated. And I think those two factors together um, you know, are, are really, really important, actually critical, I would say, because our whole team is, is, is just really dedicated, motivated, and has the right experience to actually execute and deliver. And I would say in a nutshell, that this is, this is what, what makes us very special. And I think um, that, that this is what will allow us to be a winner in this market. I think that uh, what you're saying is great. One of the biggest things for us as a community, when we're looking and we've got a trading club and we're looking at stocks every day, we like companies that make money. <laughs> uh, I know with me, I like companies that make money. If the company doesn't make 100%. money, I'm not interested, right? And if they're losing money, I'm definitely not interested. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest problems that happened in the cannabis space, and I was probably one of the first guys ever on YouTube in 2017 who started talking about cannabis stocks. Absolutely. Everybody wanted to be a first mover advantage. Aurora Cannabis wanted first mover advantage. Yes. Canopy Growth wanted first mover advantage. Afria wanted first mover advantage. And what happened? They spent way too much money. They made a bunch of mistakes. They lost a lot of money. 
They spend a lot of money on these massive facilities, which you guys don't have because you're outdoors. You guys don't have to worry about paying $100 million facilities. You guys don't have to worry about paying ridiculous electricity bills. You don't got to be paying for crazy amount of staff to manage these buildings. You just got to write, run, like you said, a lean and mean operation. Absolutely. And that's what I love about Christina Lake. This is why I'm trying to explain to everyone. This is my number one cannabis play for 2021, because this is a company that's doing it the right way. You look at the chart, it's trending up. You look at the share structure, it's tight. This is not a company that's diluting its shares just to keep the lights on, mm -hmm. which unfortunately has happened to a lot of Canadian producers. A lot. Right? Very much so, Rich. Yeah. And you um, guys are doing it the right way. And you've got a strong management team that cares about building shareholder equity. They care, care about building shareholder value. Now, really what it comes down to is we know that you guys have all of this product. Now what we need to do is who's buying the products and where's the sales going to come from? That's the next step for Christina. Absolutely. And I'm sure you're going to answer that question. And that's what I think the, the investors are looking for is, okay, you've got this lean, mean operation. You've got all these crops, you've got all this extraction, you've got all this, you know, product to sell who's going to buy it. And what's the upside once you get the sales going and what's the revenue going to look like? Absolutely. So Rich, this is actually my direct responsibility. So I was really looking forward to you asking me this. I was hoping that you will anyways. Um, so I'll get to it in a second. But if I may, uh, I would just love to comment on some of the things that you mentioned. So specifically the first, first mover advantage. And, um, and then I want to just kind of comment on, on, on the investor public. And, and I, I guess the disappointment and heartache that, that the uh, cannabis investors have experienced over the last two years. So I think, you know, you're, you raise a very valid point on first mover advantage. And I think this is, again, certainly not trying to criticize, just want to kind of highlight and, and reconfirm what you said and provide my perspective. I think one of the issues with, with exactly what you highlighted is that a lot of the big LPs, and let's just say the top five, top 10, were very stuck on, on having the first mover advantage. And I think that's a, that's a bit of a gamble because if, if you look at very disciplined um, consumer packaged goods businesses in the world, no one is necessarily focusing on, on first mover advantage. They're focusing on executing in the market and doing it correctly. And so sometimes that doesn't mean being the first one that actually means that it's far more important to be the best one as opposed to, to you know, as, as opposed to being the first one. And why I'm mentioning this, Rich, is because I want to highlight why we are entering the market now in 20, you know, 2020, really. Obviously, we started earlier as, as kind of the, the growth side was getting prepared. But I think you can agree that, you know, with the legalization, and, and I'm talking about adult recreational um, legalization, that the medical was a little bit prior to that. But I think since 2018, I think some of the more careful players, um, more institutional players, or let's just say more, more experienced seasoned players, like we, we think that we are, we kind of wanted to wait out, watch the market, see how things net out, learn from the mistakes that took place. And I think a lot of the mistakes were exactly what you were highlighting is what was that almost closed in focus on first mover advantage, as opposed to really just kind of thinking more tactically and I think this is what caused a lot of the heartache and disappointment on, on the investor side. And so kind of bridge, bridging what I'm, what I'm describing here to us, um, you know, we, and, and I guess, and I guess I touched on this with kind of our lean and mean structure and, and, and very kind of cautious yet tactical growth plans. Um, this brings me conveniently to, to the point of sales. So, so as I highlighted earlier, we have very low cost of input feed. That allows us to make margin, even if there, even if the market gets further aggressive and, and there is further price compression. I think I think this is the most important part for everyone to know and, and, and for the investor public is that we will be profitable even if there's very aggressive price compression. So we are cer certainly ready for that. But I think I don't want to just talk about the price because I've just outlined that, that that will work, but it's also the quality. And I'm incredibly proud of our teams. Uh, both on, on the cultivation and on the processing side that I would dare to say that we're quite close to actually having perfected the extraction process. Um, there's also an incredibly exciting, um, I would say, thing that, that's happening at Christina Lake, which unfortunately I'm unable to disclose at this point, but there, there will be a, a, a detailed press release on this probably within the next month or two. And, and we are working on some, some really groundbreaking equipment. And I think 
um, not, not just that, but I would say that for the last few months since we finished harvesting, Rich, we've been introducing more and more sophisticated equipment. We've been tweaking parameters, tweaking basically every process in-house. And, and I dare to say that we're now close to, close to a point where things are so systemized that we will very soon be almost like a factory. And I'm certainly not trying to take the, the human input out of it. I'm just trying to say that we are so disciplined in our execution and in our planning and in all of our systems that we, will, we are very close to getting to a point where you will be very accurately able to, to calculate all costs and, 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 and frankly, every, every operational item will, will, will be traceable and, and will be quite perfected. So I'm just, I'm, I'm just incredibly excited to say that we, we've got a lot of great things and, and maybe I'm not being detailed enough. It's simply just because I'm, I'm not at the liberty to, to say some of these things. But I will say that with the low cost input and our close to perfected extraction process or system, we are, we are close, close to a point where we'll be very consistently delivering high potency product that will be of tremendous quality and will be able to sell it at a very competitive price. So if you look at high quality and high quality and very competitive price, I think you've got a winning formula. And I think Rich, that's, that's what Christina Lake Cannabis is. I love it. I love what I'm hearing. It's all about making money guys, you know, stocks that are doing well, they're all making money. Okay. You mm. look at companies doing well, they're all making money. You look at situations like GameStop, which it's a hype situation. Yeah. That's going to be a pump and it's going to dump. Right? Absolutely. You Absolutely. want to avoid pump and dumps, you got to invest in great businesses, right? Businesses that are profitable, that are going in the right direction. Milan, can you explain to the community a little bit about your experience? Because I know that you're not new in this industry. No. So, so I think... Um, my background is in consumer packaged goods, as, as you could probably tell, just, just from, from the focus on execution and some of the comments I've made. But um, I really kind of started my CPG career in, in beverage alcohol. And I think any sort of controlled substances, um, once you get comfortable, whether it's tobacco, whether it's beverage alcohol, or whether it's cannabis, you kind of have the same fundamentals. I mean, generally speaking, CPG industry, you have, you have you know, the, the same fundamentals. And I, think, and I think the biggest one is focus on execution while being very disciplined and tactical in your, in your cost structure and in how, how you go to market. And I think we have a very varied team. Um, and what I mean by that is that while us on the sales side, um, myself and Rob Jones, I'm, I'm kind of the CPG side. Rob Jones has spent um, over 30 years in, in very large volume commodity trading, which you know for us operating in the wholesale market, that's, that's very critical. So, so I would say that on the sales side, we've got a very healthy mix of, of kind of focus on execution and understanding the CPG market, which is me, and really kind of understanding how our wholesale selling translates all the way down to the consumer. And then Rob has kind of the bigger macro picture because he's done tremendous deals um, in commodities over the last 30 years. So I think, I think on the, on the sales, sales side, this is it. And I think one of the other things that I want to um, mention, I mean, I think you kind of alluded to it is that, you know, people want to, uh, people don't want to invest into pump and dumps. And I, and I think this is an, another thing I want to highlight is that, and I myself as an investor, and I, I invest quite aggressively, I always go after fundamentally sound businesses, you know, businesses where you where, where you know, where you can trust the management, you see that these are accomplished individuals that are experienced and able to execute. And I mean, if you look, if you look at our management team and our board of directors, we have, we have, you know, I, I would dare to say some of the best executives out there. So again, we've, we've entered later because we got to kind of see the mistakes. We're very disciplined. The, the, the management team board of directors are excellent and, and, and now come into the sales side of things. So, so where we are currently, Rich, um, sorry, just because I, I kind of went off on the background and I forgot your initial question, but basically who is interested in buying? How close are we to, to, to selling products? So we're literally weeks away. Um, um, you know, we, we, we definitely expect to make our first sales in, in, in actually this month. And nice. I, I, I would love to take the opportunity to explain um, you know, if, if, if some of the individuals who don't, don't work in the industry, just so they can better understand why there may be, I wouldn't even say delays, because as I, as I mentioned, we execute on everything, but it, it takes a little time because cannabis is very highly regulated. As, as I kind of mentioned, it's, it's very similar to kind of, kind of tobacco where it's, you know, there's a lot of regulation. So, so you can't 
execute as fast on certain things. And one of the things that I really want to touch on is before you can really even speak about your product, you need to get a certificate of analysis from a third party lab. And it must be one of the labs that's, that's um, approved by Health Canada. So any batch that you work on, and, and I think you can, you can certainly appreciate that, you know, us being a new company, as we continue, as I was mentioning, we continue tweaking parameters. Every time you make an improvement internally and you make a new batch, you have to send it out for testing. The turnaround time is a week to two weeks to get a full suite of Health Canada demanded tests. So, so every time you're, you're, you're trying to do some trial and error testing, you're looking at one week to two weeks of a turnaround. And I think, so, so, so that kind of, you know, it, it delay. Takes, absolutely. It's delay so, yeah. it, correct. And so it takes us a little bit of time to, to build up inventory and, and get to the sale. But right now, as we speak, um, we are actually, um, we have fairly healthy inventory levels and we're, we're ramping up daily. We're actually running the facility 24 hours a day. So, so we're certainly getting to a point that by next week and, and the following week, we're going to have a very healthy inventory levels. And, and we are currently um, in, in, in chats with, with a lot of, um, with a lot of potential clients. And I think we're, as I, as I said, I can't disclose, but we have a few sales that are, that are lined up. So we, we should see revenue in, in the coming weeks. And, I guess also to, to kind of describe who are we selling to or who are our clients. Um, so as I alluded to earlier, we're, we're not going with a Christina Lake brand trying to sell to, to the final consumer in retail. We are operating in wholesale. So what we are trying to do is kind of cannabis commodity sales. So we specialize in winterized oil and distillate. And these are the critical ingredients, Rich, that make any of the 2.0 cannabis products, which, which arguably are one of the most popular ones right now in the market. And that would be your topicals, your edibles, your vapes, um, even ingestible oils. So we are basically a wholesale, large scale producer of, of the most critical ingredients that make up these pro products. So basically any, any licensed producer that is focused on making 2.0 products and requires distillate and winterized oil, we are they are our potential clients. So that's who we're selling to, Rich. Wow. So you're, pre and, and you can sell into uh, MSOs in the US as well, or is it just Canada? It is just Canada at this point. I, I think, I think the US is, is, you know, it, until it's federally legal, Rich, I think it's, it's kind of um, hands off, but um, who knows, right? I think there's, there's a lot of chatter in, in the market that US will, will fall and, and, <laughs> and kind of legalize federally. So um, you know, I don't really want to comment any further until th that takes place, but certainly um, once that once it does, I think that will open up a, a whole new segment that I think we we can't even quite imagine what what what, what sort of size that's going to bring. So, um, yeah, but for right now, we're focused on Canada. And I guess I should also mention that there are some export opportunities as well. And I think and I think it's really interesting that we um, we get contacted quite frequently by a lot of um, export opportunities. But again, we're, we're very careful. We, we want to kind of build cautiously, tactically, get, get known in our community, BC, Western Canada, nationwide. And then, and then obviously we'll, we'll um, entertain any sort of export opportunities. But we, we just want to, you know, do it step by step and, and knock on wood, we are. And we I like that. You guys are looking to be here for a long time, not a good time. I absolutely. Like <laughs> absolutely. Long-term focus is, is definitely, I'm, I'm, I'm actually really glad that you highlighted because I forgot to mention it. But I was going to say that that's also another um, really important part that, that sets us apart. And again, I, I certainly don't want to be handpicking any other licensed producers. But, you know, to your earlier point on all the consolidation and, and all, the, all the disappointment that's taken place. Um, anyways, I'm going to stop it there. But yeah, we're, we're definitely here for, for the long term. This is certainly not a short term focus. Um, this, this is a long term focus. It's been an interesting ride in the cannabis sector. Like I said, I started YouTube talking about cannabis stocks in 2017. You can go back to 2017 and see all my videos with Aurora Cannabis when it was at a dollar, Afria when it was at a dollar, Kronos wow. when it was at a dollar, Cannabis Growth when it was at five bucks. So we were literally like, I was literally the first one on YouTube ever to talk about cannabis stocks. And then everybody jumped on the bandwagon. Cannabis exploded. Aurora went from a dollar to 15. Afria went from a dollar to 20. Uh, canopy growth went from five bucks to 70. Like it was wild and people made a lot of money. And then it all came crashing down, especially yeah. in Canada, right? It all came crashing down, but now they're all kind of coming back up. 
it's the trends in the markets, right? Now they're all kind of coming back up. So perfect time to get into cannabis stocks, in my opinion, and a perfect time to put Christina Lake Cannabis on your watch list, put it on your radar, CLC in Canada, CLCFF in America, CLB in Frankfurt, Germany. You guys are in all the major markets. Stocks already doubled since we started talking to our community about it. So I know our community is really happy. And I honestly believe that this is just getting started because when I talk to people about cannabis stocks, they never mention Christina Lake. And I don't think it's because they don't like it. I just don't think they know about it. So I feel like it's my responsibility to let people know about this great company. And if I have to shout from the rooftops, that's what I'm going to do. If there's one thing that you want the shareholders to take from this interview, this, this video, what would it be, Milan? I would just want to reconfirm that, you know, we are incredibly committed, um, very focused on execution and, and kind of what we alluded to on in, in, in your previous question, we are here definitely for the long term. So this is not a short term focus um, like you're seeing a lot in, in the market. We are here not just for a good time, but for a very long time. So that's awesome. That's awesome. And if anyone wants to get in contact you, with you, Milan, and they're interested in some of your products, some of your isolate, they want to do business or they're an investor, what's the best way for them to reach you? Best way, best way to reach me is, is through our website. We've got investor relations. Um, I, I actually, sorry, that there's a um, kind of info at uh, Christina, like my apologies that I don't know it off the top of my head, but, but there is a contact button um, that, gets, um, that gets transferred to me pretty much immediately. So if anyone would love to reach out, I would I very much look forward to speaking to you. That's great. Well, thank you for joining us. Milan Stefansik, the Director of Sales and Marketing for Christina Lake Cannabis. If you guys are not winning, you're not watching, we bring you the winners and we bring them to you first. We brought you Christina Lake Cannabis first. It's already up 100%. And this is a story that's just getting started. Now, remember, Rich TV Live is strictly for education and entertainment purposes. Always do your due diligence. Always do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about here on Rich TV Live. Chances are, if you go to your financial advisor and say, wow, I found out about this great company, Christina Lake, what do you think? They're going to say, hmm. It's really good. Where'd you get that pick? And then you can say from my boy, Rich, we love to bring you guys winners. Uh, Milan, thank you for joining us. Love to have you back on the show again, my friend. Um, love to hear from great companies early and often. So if there's ever any big news or breaking news and you'd love to let the people know, I'd love to invite you back on the show. Keep up all your hard work on building a great company and doing it the right way. I think that slow and steady always wins the race. I love that mentality. Uh, I think you guys are doing the right things and I'm a big fan of Christina Lake Cannabis. So congratulations on all your success thus far. And I know you're not even getting- Thank you very much, Rich. Uh, really appreciate it. And I uh, appreciate your time and I look forward to coming back to your show and, and uh, update you guys on, on uh, any further developments. Thank you very much. Have a okay, great man. day. Thank you so much. Have thank yourself you, a great Rich. day. I know you're busy, man. I'll let you get back to work. For all of you guys that are watching, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. Stay tuned. This is Rich from Rich to be Live with Milan from Christina Lake Cannabis. Thank you.